morning, folks. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to morning worship here in the Lausen. There's a special welcome to those returning after a break, and of course, all those visiting. It's always a delight to meet up with old friends and new, and to welcome them into God's family here at the Lausen. And isn't it great to see the youngsters with us this morning, joining us for the early part of the service. Any young visitors are invited to go across to the hall with the other youngsters when they leave church to share in the fun of Sunday school or the discussions in Teensy. The creche is back in operation in the small hall for those under three, and mums or dads can may leave their young ones there at any time during the service and be sure they're in safe hands. Well, the European Championship drawing to a close today and the recent Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, weeks of going for gold, with some winning, some not winning, and lots of crying. Here in church, we're all winners because we are going for God and he is with us. So to make sure everyone knows they belong here, let's turn to our nearest neighbors and share the greeting, if you wish, signing the message, God loves you. God loves you. Dorothy has asked me to thank all of you who supported yesterday's Guild Coffee Morning by supplying the goods, preparing and serving, or simply coming along. Your support was greatly appreciated and helped raise £852.80. I was asked to include the 80 pence because that's what I gave. Can I also say how much we in the Lausen appreciate the hard work and support of the Church Guild because, as we all know, most of the funds they raise are given either to charity or to the Church to help meet ongoing expenses. As you'll have seen in the intimations, other than the Church Guild and Men's Guild, all of the organisations are back in full flow with the youth club starting again this week along with Drop Zone on Friday evening. Our good as new pop-up shop, 2022 version, in the marquee here in the church grounds has, I am told, had a promising start and will continue to open 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock on weekdays and 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock on the Saturday. You and your friends should not miss the chance to pick up a bargain in clothing, footwear, toys, books, bric-a-brac, and I'm assured that there you will also get a copy. This is an important and much needed fundraising effort for the church, so we would be happy to accept and would very much appreciate donations of any good as new articles you no longer have a need for. Next Sunday, 28th, morning worship is again at 11 o'clock, and being the last Sunday in the month, there's an opportunity to take communion at the end of the service. And finally, all of you are invited across to the hall after the service for a cuppy and further fellowship before you go home. Folks, it really is good to come together to worship the Lord. Our intro to the service this morning is give thanks with a grateful heart. Please stand to sing.
time. And that's great because it's time that we can catch up with one another and we get each other's news, but we also come into God's presence because we also need to hear from God to find out how he would have us live, to try and draw closer to him so that we can understand better how our world works, but also how it should work and the potential that we have to be a much, much better place. We come because God has had his hands on us since the beginning of time. Unfortunately, for most of us, we kind of live our lives and we kind of push him aside. He's kind of out there. But his desire has always been to be close, to hold his people, that this would be a great world in which to live. And when we stop and look back, we start to see how he has had his hand upon us through the good times, through the bad times. And it's at those points that we really truly want to give thanks. There are so many more things we can give thanks for. We can give thanks for the fact that it's not raining this morning. We can give thanks for, for family, for friends. But it's good to be able to, to look at the, the good things, especially in a world that tends to dwell on the bad. Can you remember the days when the news used to come on the television and at the end there would be a little feel-good story? Have you noticed that's kind of slipped away? They're finding it harder and harder to find a nice little feel-good story at the end. So it's good that we can come together to look to the good and to celebrate. And we're going to do that just now by standing and singing again. Another song that says, Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. Loving God, we thank you for your eternal presence in our world. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for the world in which we live. We thank you for our family and our friends. Forgive us when we just take it all for granted. When we push you to one side, too busy living our lives, too busy getting involved in our own little shrimp pool to look to right or to left. Forgive us when we don't see the struggles of those in our own close proximity. Forgive us when we neither care nor bother to find out if someone is okay. 
For that is not the world you planned, a world that would be full of your love and compassion. And Lord, today we ask that you would speak to us through your word, through the songs, through our prayers, that we would feel your presence and we would hear your word speaking right into our very hearts and lives. We ask that your spirit would be amongst us, You promised that you would send your spirit, that you would be there where two or three are gathered, and we are gathered in your name this morning. And we make these prayers in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I wanted to speak particularly to our youngsters just now. That's the youngsters who are here and also youngsters who are at home. And I don't know if you can remember as far back as just June it doesn't seem that long ago, but we had quite an exciting time because we had a garden party to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee. We were celebrating the fact that this lady has been our Queen for 70 years. And she's now 96 years old, and it looks as though she's still going strong. So it was great. We had the celebration. But I have to say this, whilst she seems like a lovely, lovely lady, there's nothing that the Queen says or does in everyday life that impacts on me at all. You know, in the old days, in Scotland and in England, we had kings who would really rule. They would make the rules. They had their own armies and would enforce the rules. That's not the case anymore. And whilst I'm sure that Queen Elizabeth is a lovely lady, there's nothing that she says on a daily basis that has anything to do with my life at all, on yours either. If we really wanted to have somebody that we would call ruling over us, it would need to be someone who really knows us. It would need to be someone who really knows what's best for us. And it would really need to be someone who actually cares as well. You know, they would need to really be completely interested in us. And that's why whilst we had a great time and it was good to be part of, if we really want to have someone to lead us, to guide us, to show us the best way of life, then we need a bigger king. <coughs> Hope I don't get done for copyright. <laughs> we, need a, we need a much bigger king. We need someone who's seen it all before. We need someone who knows how tough it can be for us to live our lives. We need someone who's been through the ups and downs of living a life, but that hasn't then just gone off, but someone who has the capacity to be able to stay. And that's why we celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God, many, many years before he came, promised he would come. He promised he would send someone, and he kept his promise because he came. And he promised that this person would make a big difference, and he kept his promise because he did. And when Jesus went back to be with his father, he made another promise. He said, my spirit's going to come, and I will be with you forever and ever. And he's kept that promise too. For those of us who invite him to be part of our lives can see his presence in our lives. We can see what God does. God made many, many, many promises. And over the next 
few weeks or so, we're going to have a look at some of these promises of God and see what happened with them. But for now, we're going to sing a song. It's a golden oldie, one that will remind us that we can actually hold on to God's promises because he keeps them, standing on the promises. This is a good one for your tambourine, Angus. We shall catch up with you later. See you later, Lewis. Love the hoodie. God's Word now. You'll find the reading both in your order of service and on the screens. And we're going way, way, way back into the Old Testament times. So we're talking way beyond the 2,000 years ago, maybe a couple of thousand years before that. So way, way back into what we would call ancient history over in the Middle East. The times where they had King David, who became one of their most famous ever kings. And he was a godly man, but often he heard from God through a prophet. Prophets would come and speak to him and tell him what God desired or what God wanted him to know. And this reading is a similar one, and it contains some of those promises. So I'm going to let Ron read it to us just now. Reading from the, <coughs> excuse me, reading from the first book of Chronicles, Chapter 17, verses 7 to 22. Nathan's message to David. So tell my servant David that I, the Lord Almighty, say to him, I took you from looking after sheep in the fields and made you the ruler of my people Israel. I've been with you wherever you've gone, and I've defeated all your enemies as you advanced. I will make you as famous as the greatest leaders in the world. 
I have chosen a place for my people Israel and have settled them there where they will live without being oppressed any more. Ever since they entered this land, they have been attacked by violent people, but this will not happen again. I promise to defeat all your enemies and to give you descendants. When you die and are buried with your ancestors, I will make one of your sons king and will keep his kingdom strong. He will be the one to build a temple for me, and I will make sure that his dynasty continues forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will not withdraw my support from him as I did from Saul, whom I removed so that you could be king. I will put him in charge of my people and my kingdom forever. His dynasty will never end. Nathan told David everything that God had revealed to him. David's prayer of thanksgiving. Then King David went into the tent of the Lord's presence, sat down and prayed. I'm not worthy of what you have already done for me, Lord God, nor is my family. Yet now you are doing even more. You have made promises about my descendants in the years to come, and you, Lord God, are already treating me like someone great. What more can I say to you? You know me well, and yet you honor me, your servant. It was your will and purpose to do this for me and to show me my future greatness. Lord, there is none like you. We have always known that you alone are God. There is no other nation on earth like Israel, whom you rescued from slavery to make them your own people. The great and wonderful things you did for them spread your fame throughout the world. You rescued your people from Egypt, and drove out other nations as your people advanced. You have made Israel your own people forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now we sing, Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him. Stand to sing. Praise the Lord, ye hands adore him. Praise him, angels, in heaven heart. Soul and moon rejoice before him. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise the So let us bow before the Lord once more as we bring before him our prayers for others. Let us pray. 
Loving Lord, as we come today, we come as your people, living in a real world at real time, with real issues and also real joys. And sometimes we find it hard to continue to spread a message of love and joy when circumstances get more and more difficult. We pray particularly today for those who live in Ukraine, for those who have taken refuge and had to get out of their country at short notice, for those who have lost loved ones and lost everything. Lord, we pray particularly that you would draw close to them. We pray too, Lord, that your wisdom would actually permeate through to human beings, that the madness will stop. For there are no winners, only losers, as hate is perpetuated. Lord, we pray too for those who are struggling because of the knock-on effects, for those who are hungry, in many, many parts of the world. It beggars belief that 2022, and we still have people who don't have enough to eat, with a world that is packed with resources. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling for everyday issues, because this world can indeed be a difficult place. We pray for our own nation and our own families and communities as we face this cost of living crisis. More and more people coming out and strike. So things not running the way that we are used to them running. And the frustrations that go with it as people worry about getting through to the end of the week with enough money to go around. Lord, if ever we needed your wisdom and your compassion and your love, it is right now. Each generation, every single one, has its own issues and problems. And Lord, you've seen it all before. And so we ask that you would indeed draw close. And for those who are struggling with their physical health, mental health, we ask that you would bring your comfort and your healing for those who are struggling through the loss of a loved one, that you would bring peace into their lives in a way that only you can. Lord, for those who are struggling just because of circumstances that they have no control over, may they feel your presence and your encouragement. And Lord, we take a few moments of silence just now while we bring before you those that we know, our families, our friends that have struggles and maybe that includes us too. Loving God, we thank you for your continued presence, that you don't give up on us, even when we give up on ourselves. We pray for each and every person here this morning, those sitting behind or in front or to either side, even if we don't know their circumstances, you do. And we ask, Lord, that you would keep your hand upon them now and evermore as we make these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to sing another hymn about promise. This time it's, oh Jesus, I have promised. So let's stand and sing again.
You will have noticed in recent years that when it comes to leaders and leaders of, of nations, it's very seldom now it's a king or a queen. It tends to be a personality. And this whole kind of cult of personality seems to have taken over. We live in the world of celebrity, the world of spin doctors, the world of media. And so instead of it becoming about policy and things that can make a real difference, quite often all we hear are sound bites and it becomes about personality. If somebody's stepped a foot wrong, then the newspapers will pick it up and it'll be splashed all over, whether you're in this country or abroad. And likewise, when you hear those who are running to be prime minister at the moment, I wonder if you've ever sat and counted the times that they say, I, I will do this, I will do that. I will do the next. Actually, no, you won't. It's meant to be your government that does it. But nowadays, the world of celebrity in which we live, it seems to be this kind of I, I, I all the time. And now that I've said it, you'll probably notice it even more when different politicians stand up and you hear the I, I, rather than the government, the government. At least when the queen gives a speech, she says, my government will as opposed to I, all the time. And the reality is that there's no one person that would be able to have all of the answers for everything. It's always been that way. That's why it works so much better when you have a collaboration, a group of people getting all of their heads together. We see it in some of these kind of dictatorship, these kind of more authoritarian type societies as well, where you think, well, hang on a wee minute, where do the people come into this? That might suit you very well, but what is that doing to the people? And let's face it, if someone is meant to be ruling or governing, then it's meant to be about the people. And all of these promises that we are made time and time and time again, I think we just kind of take them all with a pinch of salt now. We just kind of give up on them. And it has to be said that at the time that David lived, the king was the king. Yes, they would have advisors. Yes, they had their own army. But nine times out of ten, they made the rules. They were the ones that had to lead their country. They were the ones that if the country was coming under attack, they would have to do something about it. And it's interesting when God speaks to Nathan. Because Nathan is to go and give David a message. David, the shepherd boy, who becomes the king. Okay? Because... If David thought for one second that God was going to give him credit for it, he was really very much mistaken. Because God points out to him how much he's had his hand upon his life. I've taken you from being a shepherd boy, and I've made you the king of my people. It's very personal. Very, very personal. Folks, the trouble is... There's a huge big gap in there because he's not a wee laddie anymore by the time that Nathan is speaking to him. And it wasn't one of these delightful little things where this young lad, oh, he looks promising. Let's stick a crown on him and becomes king. There was a lot of stuff happened in the middle and it wasn't always pleasant for David and it wasn't always easy for David from being the, the young fella that looked after the sheep and did a good job of it, to being the young fella who goes to take his big brothers a packed lunch because they're going into war and he ends up having to fight a giant, from being the young fella who was a great musician and the then king, Saul, says, oh, come and play in my court, and then becomes obsessively jealous over him. The young fella that, as he grows up, has to go on the run and in a sense makes his living 
by having a band of mercenaries around him. Because if there was one thing he was good at, it was being a warrior. So it wasn't just an easy life for him. He had to hide out in caves, had to get out of the area. It was tough. And even when he becomes king, it's not a case of that sit now, I'm in charge. Because at first, remember there was 12 tribes in Israel and only two of them actually made him king. Years pass before he becomes king of all 12. And let's not even look at his family life because that was a total nightmare. So we're not talking about this fella who, yeah, I've just sailed through. Life's been dead easy. His life has had its ups and downs. However, he was called a man after God's own heart. And he was called that for a reason. He was called that because he kind of knew when he'd blown it each time. And he would go before God and say, I've done it again. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. And God makes it very, very clear that, you know what, I've got you this far. Now listen to me, I've got you here, but I'm going to take you further. And what we forget is the same God that does that because he knows David really well. He knows his skills. He knows his talents. He knows what he's good at. He knows what he's rubbish at. The same God that did that knows us in exactly the same way. He knows who we are. He knows the doubts. He knows the fears. He knows the things that we enjoy. He knows what we're good at. He knows what we're not so good at. And for reasons best known to himself, He's called you to be here. And he's called you to be here today. Now, a lot of folks think, well, I'm here because, well, I, I, I was going to bring in so-and-so. I was Whatever you think, God, in the same way that he had his hand upon David, has called you to be here right now, today. And he does it for a reason. And it might be a personal reason, or it might be something to do with us as a church community as we move forward in life. Because things in Forfar are going to change. The kind of the, the way that the churches are going to be run is going to change. We're going to do things much more organizationally as, as, as one body. So the churches will all be united as one big congregation. Yes, worship will continue in different buildings. Of course it will. And yes, activities will continue. Of course it will. But things will change. And there's going to be some discussions on that. But the nice thing is that God knows what's in hand. And he's brought us this far. And he's going to keep his hand upon us as a church family and lead us into the future as well. Now, David... What God did with David was he gave him a place at the heart of history. He's at the heart of history of a nation. He's at the heart of history for all time because whenever you look at Jewish history, King David is always mentioned, possibly as the, the best king of all time. In fact, they long for someone else like David to come and take over. Maybe we could do with that today. Maybe that's who should be prime minister. However, what God has done for you is he's made you part of the history of this place. And often we don't think of it like that. But he's brought you here at this time and you also become part of the history of this place. And it won't just be a case of you sitting, thinking back one time, you know, when you're getting that way where you just want to sit in a chair and have a wee relax. And you don't, not just you thinking, remember that time when we did this at the church or we did that at the church? There will be people who will remember the time when we did this at the church. I bump into people all the time, young people who come up to me and say, remember when, already, 
He has brought you for a reason, and you're part of the history of his family right here, right now, and as we move forward. But there's a couple of things about the promises that that God makes to David that are a bit odd. When you die and are buried with your ancestors, I will make one of your sons king and will keep his kingdom strong. He will be the one to build a temple for me, and I will make sure that his dynasty continues forever. Well, David's son Solomon certainly did become king, and we've all heard about the wisdom of Solomon, and he certainly did build a physical temple for God, but it has to be said that His son was a bit of a prat, to be honest. And under his his son's leadership, not Solomon, but his son's, well, the nation divides. Within a couple of hundred years, the northern tribes are taken into captivity. Within a couple of hundred years after that, the southern ones are taken into captivity. And it all seems to fall flat. But wait, what about this promise? In fact, by the time that Jesus comes, King Herod is there. Now, he's got nothing to do with David's line. That's why they all hated him. Who's this foreigner coming and taking over as king just because the Romans want him to be there? They didn't like him at all. They wanted one of David's ancestors. But what about God's promise? And I maybe answered it when I said, by the time that Jesus came. Because then it gets strange. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will not withdraw my support from him as I did from Saul, whom I removed so that you could be king. I will put him in charge of my people and my kingdom forever. And his dynasty will never end. Well, that can't be an ordinary bloke he's talking about. It can't be an ordinary person. But when Jesus came, think back to all of your Christmas carols. Jesus was of David's descendants, of David's line. And I will be his father, and he will be my son. And when the temple falls, remember that Jesus always said he was the temple. He was God's temple, a temple that could never be pulled down. And I will put him in charge of my kingdom forever. And please don't think that means that he's sitting on a wee throne as depicted in that picture in the middle there in heaven. Because God's kingdom is right here, right now. And it's there for the taking as we build it, as we live it. And here's where, the, where it gets even better. The promise that his son made. I will be with you always to the end of of time. God said, I will put him in charge of my people and my kingdom forever. His dynasty will never end. The Lord Jesus Christ, who we've seen, seems to be able in the scriptures to walk between that dimension of heaven and earth and walk back again. Who we've seen as we've looked at the scriptures sends his Holy Spirit to be up close and personal. So this God of the nations is a God of promise. And we, therefore, become people of his promise. And there's so many of them. And we think, oh, well, it's pretty far removed because, well, David was around thousands of years ago and he was speaking to David. But look, he's not, he's speaking about his kingdom. And he's speaking of one who will be up close and personal now and forever as he sent his son. 
fulfilling all of those promises already. And there's one other little thing that I'm going to close with. And it's quite amazing. It's David's response. Because what you don't hear is David going, oh, whoa, 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 hang on a wee minute. Because, you know, I had a little bit of part in this. Because, you know, well, I am a good soldier. And I was a good shepherd. And I did beat Goliath. At no point are you hearing David saying, I, 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 I. Because David recognizes also how many times he blew it. David recognizes also there was times when he had no clue what was going on. You know, he just kind of holds on to God's shirt tails, as many of us do and need to do. David recognizes immediately what God has done. He totally understands that he'd gone from being a shepherd boy to being a king. He totally understands that there's times that he could have died in a cave but didn't. He totally understands that God has put him in the right place at the right time. And quite often I say to us, never be, never be um, thinking it's a coincidence when somebody just appears at the right place at the right time for something that's happening in your life. It's what I call a God incidence, the way that God keeps his hand upon us. David praises God, thanks him for blessing him so much more than he would ever deserve. He recognizes that. And then it begs the question, will we? Can we look back and realize that these God incidences in our lives didn't just happen by chance, but God has had his hand upon us and continues to have his hand upon us. And his desire is to lead and to guide us on into something new and different and bigger and better in our ordinary everyday lives. And yes, as his people, as his community. That's why it's important that we praise that's why it's important that we give thanks to God and say, thank you. I see it now. Now that I look back, I see it. Maybe as I go forward, I'll see it all the more. It's for each one of us to look at our own lives and just see God's hand at work and know that promise. I will be with you always to the end of the age. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you that you keep your promise, that your promises are true, that your promises are to nations and your promises are to individuals, that you care for each and every one of us, that you love us with a passion that we can't begin to understand. And we ask, Lord, that you would give us the courage to look at our lives and our world and see your hand at work. That you would show us how you guided and directed. That you would show us how you removed us from one place and put us somewhere else. That you would show us your great love and compassion and care for us as individuals and as your church. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we take a moment as we take up our offering. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your continued blessing. And out of the goodness, we give our gifts to you. We ask that you would accept them and that you would bless them, that we could grow your kingdom here right where we are, and that we would know your presence and see your hand upon us today and evermore. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Just before we 
sing our last hymn, I have um, something that I have to read out. As I alluded to earlier, the way that we're kind of bringing the churches together is going to change over this next year or so. Um, and because of that, we've had to put together a new plan for Angus, and that also has to be approved by Angus Presbytery. So there's going to be a discussion, there's going to be time for a, a kind of discussion about it on Saturday the 3rd of September 2022. So what the Presbytery are doing, either giving people in the congregation an opportunity to go and hear some of the discussion and to ask a question. What they're suggesting, as, long as, as well as a Presbytery elder, that we also have two or three from each congregation. So that the, the citation says, the congregation of Fofa Laos Memorial is hereby cited to appear in its own interest at a special meeting of the Presbytery of Angus to be held at St. Andrew's Church, Arbroath, on Saturday, 3rd September 2022 at 10 a.m., when the presbytery will consider the draft presbytery mission plan. Each congregation is entitled to send up to three representatives, one of whom can be the spokesperson, in addition to any full members of presbytery. So I'm duty-bound to read this out this week and next week. Somebody please remind me that I have to read it out again next week, or I will forget. Okay. Please don't rush off at the end. We've got a cuppy, and it's a great chance to have a chat and to catch up on everybody's news. But we're going to close just now by standing and singing together, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. So now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.